Morning grade seventh and welcome to the online classes of NLK Kripa Schools. Today we will continue further with chapter one of English literature, Darwin Diaries. Students, this is part two of the video and I hope you all must have watched part one. So before we proceed with our today's content, let's have a quick recall of our previous class. Students, in our last class we learned that this story was about five year long historic expedition of British naturalist Charles Darwin. He was working on his theory of evolution. Second, we came to know that James Kincaid, his assistant, is narrating the story through a series of entries in his diary. They were about to arrive at the Galapagos Island and they landed on the northeast coast of the Chatham Island where we came to know that the beach was made of dark colored lava, the land all around was jacked and buckled, and the only vegetation was stunted brushwood, whereas the sea around Chatham Island was swarming with fish, shark, and turtles. This was a complete contrast between the land and the sea of the same island. Next, we learned that the birds were unaccustomed to human company means it was easy for us to prod or catch the birds on that island. Students, this was all about our previous class. Now we'll start with our today's content that is page number 6, the very last paragraph of the same page, page number 6. You can see in front of your screen the last paragraph of page number 6. I'll start with the reading now. Today we came across the sea going iguana. This creature swarms in its hundred over the rocks. The iguana is very tame. It will put up with being prodded and poked. Now what the boy is trying to tell us that these creatures that is the sea going iguana moves in groups of hundred over the rocks and they are not very wild. Now let's see what happens further. Mr. Darwin even picked up one, swung it around his head and threw it into a rock pool. Now what did Mr. Darwin do with one of the iguana? He picked up one, swung it around his head in the air and then threw that iguana into the rock pool that is in the water. Now if someone slaps a student, what we do? We slap them back. So, do you think the iguana will react in some kind of violent way over here? As if, as Mr. Darwin has thrown that iguana into the rock pool. Let's see what is the reaction of the iguana now. It just picked itself up again and waddled back to where it had been lying, as if nothing had happened. Now, what was the reaction of the iguana student? It was a very calm one. It just returned back silently without thinking that something had happened to the same place it was sitting in. Mr. Darwin threw it back into the rock pool. When the creature returned, he repeated the operation. Student, operation over here means process. Now, Mr. Darwin, when that iguana came back to the same place, he repeated the same process of throwing the iguana into the water once again. Now, let's see. How does the iguana react now? Let's move to the next page that is page number 7 of our textbooks, the very first paragraph of the same page. Once more the iguana pl plodded back to its place. Now student plodded over here means walk slowly with a lot of effort. Now iguana again came back to the same place putting a lot of effort. Mr. Darwin concluded that Whereas the European lizards have learned to fear man, these iguanas have failed to develop that hereditary instinct. Now, over here, through this, through this action and reaction of Mr. Darwin and uh, the iguana, Mr. Darwin concludes that European lizards, one of the ancestors or fellow companions of uh, these iguanas, have learned to fear man means they are scared of human company. These iguanas have failed to develop such characteristics, such traits. Hereditary instinct over here, student, means the characteristics which are passed from our ancestors to us. And 
instinct over here means the abil natural ability of an animal to behave in a certain way without having learned from someone else in short mr darwin wants to say that european lizards being one of the ancestors of iguanas have learned to fear man but iguanas being their future generations have failed to carry such genes in them means they don't have such characteristics of fearing human company let's le- read further the iguana saw the site of the rock pool as a safe sanctuary so it kept returning to it even though mr darwin insisted on throwing it back in the pool now he further says that iguanas find that site of the rock pool as a safe place to live in so it kept back moving to that place again and again even though mr darwin was throwing that iguana into the water students this was all about iguana now we'll come across one of the biggest inhabitants of this island that is the galapagos tortoise but before we read the text i would like to show you the pictures of the galapagos tortoise this is the galapagos tortoise you can see how big it is in the picture so students let's continue with the second paragraph of page number 7 i hope it's visible to you now some while later we came across the lands biggest inhabitant the huge galapagos tortoise now was the time when charles darwin james kincaid and the other fellow team members came across the huge galapagos tortoise we had been trudging through the weedy vegetation when we came across a kind of path between the cinders and the cacti now the boy says that we were all tired walking in that vd vegetation and in that path only they find one of the path where cinders and the cacti were growing cinders student means rock fragments and ash erupted by the volcanoes we all know that the galapagos island were made from volcanic rocks so for sure there were vents all over the place there were craters all over the place from which lava must be coming out so one of those paths the narrator and his, the other members were walking and turning up one of these path we finally met a pair of tortoise face to face and one on one of those path they finally met a pair of tortoise face to face they had an encounter with the tortoise they must have weighed at least 200 pounds each now what is this narrator this boy little boy telling us the weight of that tortoise at least 200 pounds each means weight of one was about 200 pounds let's move to the uh, next paragraph that is paragraph 3 of the same page as we approached one was eating a cacti now he's telling what the tortoise was doing one of it was eating a cactus the other gave a grumpy hiss and walked away now what was the reaction of the other it just made some sound of his, uh, it and walked away from that place i tried riding its back though the tortoise didn't seem at all concerned or even aware that i was perched on its shell now the boy tells us that he tried to rest on the back of the tortoise shell and the tortoise was not even bothered that someone was sitting on its back i'll show you the picture how this boy is trying to sit you can see on the next page the side image you can see over here how this james kinkid is trying to sit on the back of the tortoise but the tortoise is not at all aware of this fact i was unable to balance and kept slipping off and landing with a thump now what was happening with this boy you all know how the shell of a tortoise looks it's all slanting and this way so when the boy was sitting over here he came down with a thump on the ground right so he was trying very hard to sit on the back of the tortoise but was unable to 
Now was the turn. Let's see who's going to sit. Midshipman King also had a go at riding the tortoise, but he landed up sprawled in an ill and again heap just as I had. Now, next who's trying to sit on the back of the tortoise was an officer in the Royal Navy, that is the midshipman king. He also tried to sit at the back of the tortoise, but he also came down on the ground with a hum. Now, just see, inelegant over here student means that without grace. Now, this midshipman is trying to sit on the back of the tortoise, but how he is falling down? With hands and legs apart. That is in a very awkward manner that midshipman came, came to the ground. Sprawl student means in a very awkward manner with hands and legs spread far apart. Student, this was all about the Chatham Island and the species Charles Darwin and his team members came across over here. Next, we come to the next group of islands that is the Al Albemarle Island. I repeat, it's Albemarle Island. We came across a second species of iguana. Over here, students, they came across a second species of iguana, but it was not similar to the one on the Chatham Island. On the Chatham Island, we met a sea going iguana. Over here, we'll be seeing a land based reptile. Let's read it. On Albemarle Island, we came across a second species of iguana. In contrast to its cousin on Chatham Island, this is a land based reptile. This was the difference between the two species of the iguanas on the Chatham and Albemarle Island. It is just as unaccustomed to people as the sea-going iguana on the Chatham Island. Now, what this boy is telling us that like the sea-going iguana on the Chatham Island, the land-based reptile that is the iguana on this island is also unaccustomed to people. That is, they are also not afraid of the human company. Mr. Darwin watched one of them burying itself in a burrow. When it was halfway underground, he pulled its tail. The iguana emerged to see what the matter was. Now, Mr. Darwin over here, what he did, firstly, he was watching the iguana burying itself in the burrow. Burrow students, you all know a hole in the ground in which an animal lives. So, the iguana was burying itself in a burrow. And when it was about to reach half the place, Mr. Darwin pulled its tail right he just pulled it a bit and the iguana now just emerged that is it came out from the ground just to see that who what the actually the matter was who was trying to disturb his going inside the ground it clearly wanted to know what was impeding its process impeding student means what was disturbing or what was acting as an obstacle in its process to go inside the ground. And it stared hard at Mr. Darwin, as if to say, what are you playing at? But it wasn't afraid. Now, when student, he emerged out of the ground, he just stared hard at Mr. Darwin, just as to ask him that I am not a thing to play at. Means, why are you disturbing me? What is the reason that you are disturbing me? But it wasn't afraid. But it was not at all afraid. It hadn't learned to fear people. They were not afraid of human company. Student, this was all about today's class. Till now, we have completed two groups of island which Charles Darwin and his team have explored. So, let's strengthen our vocabulary now. The very first word is operation, that is process. We all know that Mr. Darwin was repeating the operation of throwing the iguana into the rock pool. Second word student is plodded, walk slowly with lot of effort. In return to the reaction of, to the action of Mr. Darwin, this iguana returned back very slowly making a lot of efforts to the side of the rock pool. Third word student is hereditary, that which we that 
which can be passed from one generation to the other through the genes. Fourth word student is instinct, a natural ability that causes an animal or human being to behave in a certain way without having to learn from someone else. These two words we came across when Mr. Darwin concluded that iguanas have failed to develop this characteristic of fearing from human company. Students, now we come to the fifth word, cinders, rock fragments and ash erupted by volcanoes. This word we came across when the narrator and the other members were walking on the island and they came across a path between the cinders. Next word student is midshipman, an officer in the Royal Navy. We came across this uh, word when they were trying to ride back on the uh, they when, when they were trying to ride back on the back of the tortoise. Seventh word student is inelegant that is without grace the midshipman king landed on the ground in an inelegant heap students now let's have a quick recap of our today's class they came across seagoing iguanas they over here is charles darwin james kinkett and the other fellow members next we came across mr darwin picked one up swung it around his head and threw it into the rock pool it came back to where it was. Mr. Darwin repeated the process but Iguana came back to its place. Now what is Mr. Da uh, this point trying to tell us? Yes, it reminds of, of that part where Mr. Darwin picked one of the Iguana on the Chatham Island and threw it into the rock pool but the Iguana again and again came back to the same place. And he thus conclude, concluded that Iguanas have failed to develop hereditary instinct. Which hereditary instinct of fearing human company. Next, then we came across huge Galapagos tortoise. When they tried to ride on its back, the tortoise didn't seem con concerned, but they kept on slipping. So this was all about the Chatham Island. Now let's move to the another group, that is the Albemarle Island. They came across second species of iguana over here, that was land-based reptile it was just as unaccustomed to people on as seagoing iguana on chatham island it was also not afraid like the species on the chatham island mr darwin watched one burning itself in the barrow and what he did with that he just put its tail and stared and what it did it stared hard at mr darwin but it wasn't afraid because it had not learned to fear people. Students, this was all for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you understood today's content. In case you have any problem, you can ask on your WhatsApp groups. Thank you.